shot today was Liam Duran, photographer based in Breckenridge, Colorado. Um, we originally met Liam through our Facebook page. He was posting some really fantastic sports action winter shots um, with a 10 to 20 millimeter f3.5 Sigma EX lens. Um, and it's so funny when you think of sports, you normally think of super telephoto lenses, but uh, these shots that Liam was posting were just really, really impactful of him working with these uh, skiers and uh, winter athletes that he knows. And uh, we liked him so much, we invited him to uh, be a guest blogger and uh, sent him a whole bunch of uh, new Sigma gear to check out. And uh, Liam, great to talk to you us today. Yeah, thanks for having me, Jack. This is really cool. So Liam, can you give us a little bit about your background? Um, yeah, uh, you know, I was, I was mostly raised in Colorado, and uh, I left for the East Coast for a while. I went to high school in Connecticut, uh, college in North Carolina, and I got back here to uh, uh, Breckenridge, I guess about 16 or 17 years ago now, and uh, been here ever since. Very cool. Now, did you come to the winter sports and the action sports photography from your background in these sports, or was it, were you a photographer first and a skier second, or a skier first and a photographer? And uh, how how do you, it, you're sort of like living this really cool winter sports, action sports lifestyle. So can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. No, it definitely came through. I was a, you know, the athlete first. Um, I was a skier, a mountain biker, hiker, backpacker, whatever, fly fisherman first, and then I. I always had a camera with me. It started with a pocket camera, then it went into an old Minolta slide film camera, um, and then slowly um, built up my camera and lens collection and built up my business, I guess, and now I'm shooting adventure sports pretty much year-round full-time at this point. Very cool. And you do catalog work for uh, some of the main uh, lifestyle companies. You've also been published in uh, a bunch of the top ski titles. Can you tell us a little bit about your uh, your some of your, your credentials? Uh, yeah, sure. You know, I, I do a tremendous amount of editorial photography. Um, I'm the senior photographer with onthesnow.com, which is a really big ski website. And then I also work very closely with all the main, uh, the ski magazines, Powder, Backcountry, Ski, Skiing, um, as well as uh, a bit with Outside and uh, a couple other mags as well. Um, so I do, I do quite a bit of editorial and commercial work too. Um, I've got a you know a growing group of clients that I work with in uh, in the commercial side as well, and hoping to grow that as well. Very cool. Can we take a look at some of your work? Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Um, let me let's see. A little screen share. So I've got kind of a. You know, just a handful of photos here that show a little bit what I do. Um, you know, let's just start with this first one here. And Jack, I don't know if you've seen this one yet, but this is a this is the one I shot last winter with the 1020, uh, the F35, and this will actually be in Skiing's Photo Annual coming up here in the next probably few weeks. It'll go to print. Um, and this is a, this is a professional skier, Todd Laguerre, and we went out late one afternoon. It was 18 below air temperature, and wow. that being that cold, if you see this little bit of a sun dog here, it was so cold it was squeezing the last bits of moisture out of the air and just creating this diamond dust effect just floating through the air. So we hung out there for a while and, uh, and shot and shot and shot until the sun went down, and this ended up being the best of the shots. And... Uh, uh, and yeah, so that was a, that's a classic 1020, super wide angle, gives you a sense of place, but you also get that sense of action and adventure out of it too. Um, this is, I believe, the shot that you and I kind of got introduced on, as I recall. I'm not totally positive. This, this is one again, of them, yeah. This, yeah, another mountain bike shot. This is right in our hometown. This is, you know, this is something I ride all the time. And, uh, and this, again, went to print in one of the bike mags. Um, there's another pro rider, Kevin Soller. And we busted out the flashes. We dialed down the ambient light, popped the flashes, and we came away with a handful of really cool shots. And this was kind of my favorite um, of that whole series. And this, again, was with the 1020. You know, I think the thing that 
that originally drew me to the shot is it's such a sports action shot with you know the rider and the angle but at the same time this is a fantastic landscape shot with the diagonal lines the the very sweeping uh the, the sweeping skies and it just it, it really is incredibly immersive and that's one of those yeah. things that I was originally drawn to with your work especially with the uh the uh, the ultra wide sports action um, yeah. it's it's just it, it's very interesting and um, I think one of the things that's very interesting um, with what you do and the arena you work in is that relationship you have with these athletes and your subjects right you know I think for outdoor sports photography that's you have to have that if you don't have a good rapport with your athletes if you're not in their world or in that scene then it's really not going to happen for you you kind of have to be a, a big part of this world. Um, and going back to what you were saying about the landscape shot, you know, I, I love landscape photography. I'm not a very good landscape photographer. It's not really my first thing, but um, let's slide over to another shot. This is another one, too, that is kind of a landscape shot with an athlete in it. Um, this was a gallery shot in uh, uh, Mountain Magazine ran this as a two-page gallery. Again, 1020. Super wide angle gives you a great sense of place, and getting underneath the athlete like this, this is probably only about a two or three foot drop, but it looks more like six or seven feet. Um, just kind of a little bit of trickery with that super wide angle, and yeah, this is another another beautiful shot. This is from Steamboat. Just gorgeous. Yeah, yeah. So those are those are a couple, you know, that's that's kind of my bread and butter of what I do. A lot of ski action, a lot of winter stuff. Summer's a little bit slower for me. Um, but you know, even that, even summers are still, when I say slow, it's still pretty busy. We got a lot going on. Um, yeah, so then we met, and then after that, you guys sent over all sorts of interesting glass. So the first thing I took out was the 18250. And I shot quite a bit with that late spring, early summer. Um, again, I wasn't doing real heavy assignment work. It wasn't real intense uh, work where I knew editors were going to be staring at it and nitpicking every tiny little thing. It was like, you know what? I'm going out and having fun and getting some shots. Um, and this came from that. This is, uh, this is Todd Wells, one of, uh, one of the country's best mountain bike racers, actually. But he was at a new mountain bike race that I took the 18-250 out to. And we came away with a bunch of shots, um, a bunch of good stuff. That's actually a really fun lens. I've really enjoyed using that over the last few months. Isn't it funny how, I mean, as photographers, we get so involved in equipment and having specialized glass like the 120 to 300 that's sitting behind me, the 120 to 300 F2.8, which is a big, heavy piece of glass, and it's got a great, sharp 300 F2.8 aperture, but it is bulky. And when you've got something like that 18 to 250, I mean, between its its wide angle, its super telephoto, and um, and the macro uh, capabilities all in one, it's it's just amazing to just throw that in your bag and be able to uh, to run around and have a lot of fun with it. Um, yeah, it's just... yeah, yeah, it, it was awesome. I used that too for a, a big backpacking trip I did. Um, I went up way off trail, way into the backcountry, and I brought that was the only lens I brought with me because it was a uh, well. It was, 8,200 vertical round trip, about seven miles, and all off trail. So weight was really critical. I couldn't have a big bag of glass with me. And uh, so I brought the 18-250, and we got, well, here, I'll show you a couple of what we got out of that. Um, and, I, and I used everything with it. I used the... I used the wide angle, I used the telephoto, I used the macro, and, you know, I just, it was a blast. It was a really fun lens to, to use. So so this is uh, this is where I was. Oh, here we go. This is where I was. This is way in the backcountry, way off trail. Um, in our local mountains, it's called the Gore Range, the Eagle's Nest Wilderness. And I was really astounded. We stopped, I stopped it down to, what am I at, F10 here? Probably could have gone even a little lower. And we got, I mean, it just, it's spectacular. These are wall hangers that we got out of a consumer grade lens. Um, and it was great. It was just tack sharp. It was beautiful and got me where I needed to go without being too heavy. You know, it did everything I needed it to. 
Let's see, there might even be one or two more. I thought I had a picture of my camp in there, but I guess I did not put that one in. Um, but yeah, a really fun lens and oh, oh, there you are. Really fun lens. Had a great time with it. And if you need one lens that you're going to use for a big trip or a, uh, for travel, that's it's a go-to piece for sure. Very, very cool. Uh, you've also been doing a lot of work with the uh, 50 to 150, haven't you? Yeah, I have. That's been a really fun lens too. Um, it was great getting a, a constant f2.8 lens for an APS-C body. Um, I shoot both full frame and crop sensor, um, but it was great to really be able to use uh, you know, an f2.8 lens on my crop sensor. Hold on. That. Hold on. Let, me, uh, let me show you some of the uh, 5150s. I've been, this summer we've been doing a bit of trail running photography. Um, what do we have here? Uh, actually, this was part of a, a commercial shoot for a client. Uh, again, this is in the backyard. This is literally across the street from my house. So <laughs> it's one nice benefit of living where I do when clients call and say, can you get some, you know, mountaineering, ski mountaineering shots? Yeah, sure, it's right across the street. I can go ahead and get that tomorrow. Um, so that's a 5150 shot right there. And then here's some stuff from the other night. We drove up uh, Baldy Road, and this is Helen Kosplitz. She's one of uh, North Face's. Uh, she's on the North Face running team. Wow. So she and I went out and got some great shots. We had this. We were in the monsoon season right now in Colorado, so every afternoon we get these rain and thunderstorms. Um, and it cleared just as we needed it to. But this is a 14,000 foot peak here. Actually, it's kind of funny. You see. This little piece of snow right here, that is this right here. <laughs> so it kind of shows you, you know, kind of the community here. It's all tight. It's all right here. Um, wow. Anyhow, so this is a 14,000-foot peak right here. We got out there. I used the, the 5150 to kind of isolate her. I was at F5, so not wide open, but I'm not trying to stop it down either. And this is just all natural light. We just got sunset light and went out there and had a great shoot. Here's a uh, – this is actually the 2470, but this is from that same night just looking a different direction, kind of going back into the sun. And you can see town down below. You can see kind of the ski runs here and then uh, Helen doing her thing and, and running here. Very nice. Sorry, I switched lenses on you there for a second. I was thinking that was going to be a, a 51-50 shot. Yeah, so that's what I've been working on um, this summer. You know, again, summers are a little bit slower for me, but winters are really crazy, so I don't mind having a little bit of downtime. I can't even say downtime. Just a little bit slower in the summer. Um Here's another one, actually. Here's another 5150. This was from another article I was working on about this gentleman. He is a uh, he is he's not a pilot. He's a, a, a air nurse. Is that right? Flight for life nurse. But he was in charge of putting together a bunch of uh, how do you describe? I don't even know the best way to describe it. But he has really brought forward the flight for life program to helping it become a, a backcountry rescue unit. I think, I, I think I'm wording that correctly. I think I'm not being <laughs> disservicing him at all. But anyway, we did a whole photo shoot with him. We got in the helis. We flew around the mountains. Um, and this is just a portrait shot that I did for him. And this, is, uh, this was for an assignment piece as well. I think this is the 5150. Oh, sorry. Dang it. Another 2470. <laughs> um, I did shoot a bunch of portraits with him with the 5150, but I guess that was the one I liked the most. Well, you're shooting a lot with uh, all sorts of different Sigma glass. That's uh, yeah, and yeah, um, really, really beautiful um, work. Yeah. While you're at it, um, Liam, can you tell us a little bit? Uh, can you offer some advice for photographers who want to sort of follow their personal passions into a photographic career track like you have? Yeah. Um, 
you know, the biggest thing is is what you just said. It's following your passion. What what is your passion? What is it that you really want to cover? Is it is it motorcycle racing or is it fly fishing? What are you actually doing all the time? And and I think that's where you should start. Is if you're a skier, then you should probably be shooting as much skiing as possible. If you're into motorcycling, um, then you should probably be shooting that. If you're a surfer, then there you go. It's pretty obvious. Um, I have since spread out from just ski photography and do and do quite a bit more. But uh, but that was where I started, and that is still my my bread and butter work is, is ski photography. Um, so for a young guy coming up, yeah, start with what you do every day. What do you do every weekend? Start with that, and then I think you can once you kind of master or really get a grip on that, then you can kind of move into some other fields. Very cool. Very cool. Now, is there a lot of competition? Is it tough to break in? Is it um, and how does that competition and impact the whole sort of industry in terms of uh, you know trying to get get into the magazines trying to get a uh, trying to get a decent uh... <laughs> yeah no, it, it's hard there's there's a ton of competition I mean there are so many shooters out there um, that it's it, it's it's wild there's so many people out there doing it um, you know the best thing you can do is to break into it, I don't even, I don't even know. That's a tough one. Um, I feel lucky. I kind of came into this right before the digital wave really hit, um, so I feel like I'm a little bit a, a, ahead of that. But I know that there are probably 20 shooters right here in town that are ready to to take it to the next level. And I think what that does is it really pushes guys in my position to just shoot better and stronger and more creatively all the time. Like, you know, you're never resting on your laurels as a shooter. You're always thinking about what's the next thing I can do? What can I do better next year? What can I do next year that I didn't do this year to show the editors? Um, and so far it's been working out. Very cool. Are you finding that editors are asking you to do HDSLR videography, uh, uh, time lapse, anything, motion, um, Motion capture as, as well, or do, or do you find that this is something that you can offer in order to give yourself a uh, strategic advantage over someone else? Yeah, yeah, no, it's something that I can offer. I haven't really been asked to do a tremendous amount of video or motion capture. I do a fair amount for onthesnow.com. I work with those guys, uh, with Tim Schistler specifically, and we've created a number of videos and video series um, but as far as my print editors, I've never had anyone ask me for video or motion capture. Um, that said, I pitched a number of stories to a couple of magazines as multimedia. And people are very interested. I didn't end up getting those stories, but on the back end, when I talked to some of the editors, they told me, like, Liam, you're the only one that has pitched multimedia. Um, you keep that up and you will get those jobs. The problem with multimedia is it's really expensive. So the magazines don't have the budgets that commercial clients do. So if you're trying to pitch multimedia, it's tough because all of a sudden the price tag jumps exponentially. Instead of just me out there with a the camera, now we have me, a producer, another shooter, possibly a third shooter, um, and all of a sudden you're five, six people on the ground and all, you know, things get expensive quick. Gotcha, 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 gotcha. Uh, what advice do you have for anyone who's looking to um, break into the, the ski and the adventure of photography? Yeah, uh, shoot with passion. Shoot what you love. Um, get down low, get up high. Uh, change your, your view a lot. <clears throat> I'd say the, the, the one thing I would say, don't ever stand on two feet and hold your camera and take a photo. Like if you're just standing there, you're probably not getting the most interesting thing. People laugh at me when we're on shoots. I am crawling around in the dirt and the snow, digging holes in the snow to get myself lower, um, crawling up in trees or on top of signposts or doing anything to get some creative new look or view or angle. Um, so yeah, to break into it again, I would say just be really passionate about what you do. Shoot a lot. Um, 
don't be afraid to start getting your work in front of editors. You know, it's probably <laughs> it takes a while. You're not your first time you submit. You're probably unless you're just a some uber star shooter, you're probably not going to get picked up the first time or the second time or the third time. Um, I'll bet it took me five or six submissions before I started getting photos to run. And, you know, now I, I have on a first name basis with the editor, so things go much quicker. Here's my edit. There you go. They take what they want. Done. But when you're getting started, you're going to, it's, it's hard. You're going to eat some humble pie. You're going to, you have to have thick skin. There's no. It's still today, you have to have thick skin. I still get shut down on shots that I think are phenomenal. You know, I'm like, how is this not a two-page spread? And they're like, yeah, well, we're not really that into it. So you got to have a thick skin. Very cool. Let's start, let's close a little bit here on the power of social media and the fact that people really are paying attention. I, I mean, you know, this conversation we're having again, comes from the fact that you posted the uh, couple of shots to our Facebook page and started a conversation with me. Um, you told me a story a couple of weeks ago about, um, and I, we uh, clicked on it very quickly accidentally earlier in here today, but there was a shot with the 35 F1.4 uh, that was just a family outing that is since, of your daughter Bergen, that has since been published, right? Right, yep. From your Facebook page. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Um, and I'll show you that. It's kind of a fun little shot. It's nothing super exciting, but it's pretty cool. Mostly it's exciting for me because uh, it's my daughter's first uh, published photo. Um, so, yeah, we were at a friend's farm down in, where were we? Westcliff, Colorado. And I was just out with my kiddo shooting with the 3514. She was feeding the chickens. I posted it on Facebook. Lo and behold, 20 minutes later, one of my editors calls like, "Hey, we're doing, uh, we're doing a story about this. You know, people supporting, uh, growing their own food, vegetables, and, and livestock as well." He's like, "I'd love to use this as a photo." So there you have it. Sold a photo right through Facebook. Pretty random, but um, but yeah, I mean, it it works. It's a good tool. It it helps me a ton. I, I do a lot with with social media. Probably could be doing a lot more. Um, but at least I'm I'm in the game. That's to be sure. I mean, of course, the whole thing is when you have enough. If you have enough time, if you're spending too much time on social media, you can't be out there actually doing the work. And if you're right. actually doing the work, you don't have the time. So it's finding that balance. Um, and again, it's. I mean, I think one of the keys there is you know sharing your strongest work. And um, I mean, this this photo up here that you've got up on your screen right now, for example, is uh, from this uh, that one of the video projects that you showed me that you're working on, which is right. super cool. And uh, I mean, sharing the strongest work and only sharing the strongest work um, is one of those messages that so many photographers take. It takes so many photographers a long time to really, really understand that. I've been in this yeah. industry for a long time on very, very different, many different hats and many different um, occasions. And the advice that was given to me years ago um, when I first showed my portfolio and I thought it was fantastic, <laughs> but a photographer, uh, the photographer I very much respected said, I'm going to show you the three weakest photos in here and those are the ones I'm going to remember. He said, in 15, 20 years from now, you're going to remember this and you're going to be given the same advice. People really do remember the weakest photos right? In the portfolio. Um, and it's just when, you know, in the age of excessive photos and everybody sharing a million photos a day, it's when you share a select sampling of super high quality images that's that's really what rises to the crop um, yeah yeah and, and that's great advice it really is Jack it's, it's especially I think for younger shooters um, if you only have five great ski shots send in five don't send in 50 and have 45 you know very mediocre shots you know just stick with your very best work. Um, I think for myself, I've and probably a lot of guys that are that are doing this full time and, and it's their profession. I've, I'm a, I can be a little more slack about that now. Um, my submission, winter submission, was almost 495 images, I think. So, and again, that, you know, some of those were not my strongest work, but I get hit up for, do you have this bar or that hotel or this specific ski run? So I'll lump it all together, and I'll still give them, hey, here's my top 75. These are the real deal photos, and everything else is like travel, 
um, food and beverage, lifestyle, but a lot of that gets picked up now. But I think you want to wait till you're at a certain point in your career to start really opening up your portfolio and being like, here it all is, take what you need. Um, going back to what you said, when you're starting out, share your best work only. Very cool. Well, Liam, thank you so much for uh, talking with us today, sharing some of your uh, really cool shots and uh, advice for photographers who are looking to uh, work in the adventure in uh, you know, ski fields. We yeah, appreciate yeah. It. yeah, thank you, Jack. I really appreciate it. Sounds good. We're going to okay. uh, click the goodbye button. All right. We'll talk later.